A new Halo Infinite operation was just revealed, which brings fan favorite modes of VIP and Headhunter back to the game, along with classic armor customization. Modern Warfare 3 officially releasing on Game Pass, and Ubisoft apologizes to its fans about Assassin's Creed. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Also, if you guys like these gaming news informational videos, make sure you tap like and subscribe. Helps up the channel a ton, and let's get right into it. So it was just revealed today at the time of recording this video that a new operation will be coming on July 30th. This was hinted by Unishek earlier, saying that they have more operations coming for Halo Infinite, so knowing that the live service, if you can call it that, is going to continue for the foreseeable future, at least until probably June 2025. The newest operation coming on June 30th is called Operation Fleet Com, bringing in classic modes of VIP, which has been a long requested mode, and a mode that I know a lot of people have requested, but hasn't really been noted a whole lot until now, and that is Headhunter, the mode from Halo Reach, that free for all mode where you collect all the skulls, put it to a King of the Hill location, and you score points that way. That's coming in later in with this operation as well. And 343 did release a blog detailing some of the things that will be coming in with this. You can see how in VIP that the characters kind of glittery lit up a little bit more, kind of show that they are like a valuable target, right? But after reading through most of this, we see some information about like sandbox updates. So we're going to see a little bit of tweaking when it comes to some of how the weapons work within each other. No new sandbox items, guys. If you're holding out for new sandbox items to come within the Halo Infinite, don't hold your breath because you're going to pass out and die because I don't see that happening anytime soon. It's just going to be a general update of like, hey, we're gonna, we tweak this little tiny thing to make it more balanced kind of thing. Nothing really that significant is my expectations of this. Forge updates as well as quality of life, upda life updates. Maybe some networking changes here and there, but nothing too crazy with this update, right? The one thing I know, so they didn't say anything about a new map or new things to kind of play besides VIP coming into the game, which I think is gonna be great for custom games when it comes to Halo Infinite. But also you can see we have a dedicated playlist on July 30th with hat with for VIP, which have bizarre catalyst, forbidden, force, illusion, interference, and prism as your playable maps there. Interesting thing though is when you scroll down a little bit further, this is what actually gets me a little more excited. It said yes, Headhunter is returning as well. They mentioned later in the season. And remember what I said earlier about classic customization coming back in the Halo Infinite? We have some classic Reach armor sets coming into Halo Infinite with this operation. Now, what's gonna be part of the past, what's gonna be part of the store is yet to be seen. My expectation is all the cool stuff is going to be in the shop, but we'll have to wait and see about that. Uh, this was teased a little bit within the art of the new reveal here. We do see, I believe this is called the Operator Helmet here. And I think this is called Security, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, but keen-eyed fans did point this one thing out. Look at over here on the far left side. There is a helmet there. If you scroll in a little bit more, they took a closer screenshot. It looks a little familiar, right? And this helmet being the fan favorite max rank haunted helmet possibly coming back into Halo Infinite. Now my assumption though is that something like this which would be that awesome and that great to have likely tied to the shop though. Let's be real. We saw this happen with the Combat Evolved armor set which I will admit I bought into. It was a little bit on the pricey side of things but we saw when that armor set did come in it boosted Halo Infinite up to like top 20 top selling games on Steam just because of that armor set alone. So when you see something like this coming in for Halo Infinite again, you know that there are going to be people jumping in and trying to buy this. This is definitely going to be a shop item. I would be shocked if it comes in an exchange or comes within the event pass. Though of course, one can be very hopeful that that would be the case. That it'd be something you can earn for free by just playing the game a dedicated amount of time. But I highly doubt it. I will say though, the Operator Helmet has always been one of my favorite helmets within Halo's art style in general. But you actually do get a little bit of a view. I believe this looks to be a Commando Rifle as well. A different variation you probably get within, hopefully maybe the $5, 500 credit event pass bonus thing. But again, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. This is kind of semi-leaked information from Grunt.API talking about like, hey, there's some screenshots I found in the API of this operation. And as stated in a previous community live stream that 343 recently did, community manager Unishek went on there to say that, hey, we're gonna provide some more information throughout the week about this operation and what's gonna be part of it because this operation does go live on the next following Tuesday, July 30th. So it's coming right around the corner. This week is where you'll see a bunch of information about it. So if you guys wanna stay up to date with all the operation news, make sure you tap subscribe. 
Let's get right to the next story here. And that story being that Modern Warfare 3 is coming to Game Pass officially. We did see leaks about this previously. I think I believe we talked about it on the channel. If not, my apologies. But we do see that July 24th, which at the time of this recording and by the time this video goes live, by the time you're most likely watching this, you can play Modern Warfare 3 through Game Pass. Now, obviously with the recent changes to Game Pass, you're probably wondering what kind of Game Pass has access to Modern Warfare 3. So I believe there were like four or five different variations of it. They say to here within the blog saying that as long as you have Game Pass for console, PC Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate, you can start playing on July 24th. And just for further clarification, you get multiplayer, campaign and zombies if you're subscribed to either console Game Pass PC Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate. As someone who's played a ton of Modern Warfare 3, especially from season one to season three, I can tell you that one, the zombies, it's actually kind of fun. It's a different take, open world. They use the Warzone map for zombies kind of thing. The multiplayer is actually pretty fun. It kind of builds off of what they did within Modern Warfare 2, but it also kind of improved a lot of the mistakes that they made within that game. So the multiplayer for 6v6 is actually a lot of fun. The campaign though is where this Call of Duty completely falls apart. It shows how short of development time that they actually had to make this game. Because you can see within the campaign, they made a lot of shortcuts and reused a lot of content. And that kind of makes sense as a lot of reports about the development time of this game is very short. As in, they made this game within 16 months, which I think is just absolutely insane to make a full-fledged Call of Duty game within that short amount of time. Of course, they have an insane amount of developers. I think Grand Total with Extended Studios and the Core Studios themselves, probably a thousand people putting together to make a new Call of Duty game every single year. So this very short development cycle really plays into why we got another Modern Warfare game after having Modern Warfare 2 and the reused content that was in the campaign. So I would say just don't bother with the campaign unless you just really want to play Call of Duty campaigns that's there for you. It might actually be the worst one ever in the franchise history. But the multiplayer is pretty dang good. Warzone, if you guys have been playing it, is a ton of fun as well. Zombies is, I think, is a little underrated. It's pretty good. Not the best zombies out there that they've ever made, but it's still pretty fun. Modern Warfare 3 coming to Game Pass is a huge step forward. This is the first Call of Duty to come to Game Pass since the acquisition Microsoft made with ABK. But the thing is, I'm really curious about, are they going to be bringing some of the legacy titles over? Are we going to see Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2, original Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered <laughs> coming into this game, hopefully for Game Pass, because I would absolutely love that. One of my favorite things to do is to go back and play older campaigns before a new one releases. And since this Black Ops 6 builds off of Cold War, which I've actually have Cold War, I've never actually finished it. Uh, but I would like to go back and play some of the Black Ops games to kind of get a little more context for these characters, the gameplay style, things like that. If we do see that with Black Ops 6, it's going to borrow a lot from Cold Wars. If you want to get yourself ready to play Black Ops 6 on October 25th, I highly suggest playing Cold Wars, probably the most important one you need to play. I've actually never finished Call of Duty Cold Wars campaign, but everything I've heard, it sounds really good. If you guys want to see me make a video about that campaign, let me know in the comments down below or leave a like. But yeah, I'm just really hoping for Black Ops 1 to finally come to Game Pass. Then I finally get a chance to enjoy that game on PC. The next topic to touch on, guys, is Assassin's Creed developers Ubisoft actually apologize to its fan base about Assassin's Creed Shadow, which personally, I'm actually really excited about. I think this game has one, a really cool environment, an interesting take on the dual protagonist kind of playable characters you can utilize. But there has been a lot of controversy behind it, especially around the character Yasuke. And the Assassin's Creed Twitter actually tweeted this out, which I'm actually kind of surprised they even acknowledged it in the first place, but they actually gave a four image long apology, not apology kind of letter to the fan base to kind of tell you like, hey, we understand and we hear you guys out there who are have their complaints about the character specifically about Yasuke and Nawe being kind of like more of a side character, even though they're equal protagonists within the game that you can play as. Uh, the big thing here that I think is that it's been getting a lot of feedback, I guess is the way to phrase it properly, but a lot of pushback more of anything else from the Assassin's Creed community and also just gaming community as a whole that having Yasuke as a main playable character, as like a samurai character, where they kind of took some artistic liberties with that. Yasuke is a real person who was in feudal Japan around the time where this game is set, right? But in the game, they have Yasuke as a full-blown samurai, like the guy you want to fight as. But in reality, he was much more of like a retainer, kind of a gray area. Like 
if they needed an extra samurai maybe yasuke could be a choice that the samurais would choose kind of thing he wasn't like a full-blown like i am a samurai kind of guy which i think is really interesting though for this kind of type of character right like having a character like yosuke in feudal japan be a samurai i think is really interesting and makes me actually more interested about playing this game and want to figure out what this character's story is all about and the thing is what this apology not apology letter that assassin's creed tweeted out it's more like hey we hear you and we understand your frustrations but we're still moving forward with this right and we've provided more context about saying like assassin's creed has never been true history it's always been a twist on history which i think is very accurate when it comes to assassin's creed right it's never been like a true representation of what renaissance era history was what ancient egypt was it kind of took that setting and some major players within that time frame and kind of twisted it in the way that make it fit within the game and stuff like that and that's one thing they actually specifically mentioned within this uh non-apology letter is that they said this game is a game first and foremost more than like a history lesson because if you're trying to be historically accurate yeah this game takes its liberties quite considerably not as much as like battlefield 5 or Call of Duty Vanguard for World War II. They were just wild. And I'm actually surprised that the Assassin's Creed Twitter handle or just the company that wants, just say Ubisoft, right? Actually address a lot of these issues, mainly because like there's nothing they can really do at this point when it comes to fixing any of the concerns that people have about Assassin's Creed Shadows. It's not like they can just like go back and just completely replace Yasuke with a more like traditional character you would see in Feudal Japan. Like the game is ready to go basically and they're just kind of tightening things up a little bit for release. So when I read through this entire, uh, I guess you call it apology or message to our Japanese community specifically, it felt like it was more just like them trying to explain why they made the decisions that they made. It's just odd that so many months later, after all the complaints have come in and the discussion about this game has come around, that they finally address this now. But like, again, like it's not gonna make anybody who's upset about Assassin's Creed Shadow feel any better. And for people like me who are actually genuinely excited to try out this game, to read a message like this, makes it feel like you're just like feeding into like the internet echo chamber of hate kind of thing that we see oftentimes like even though we do feel like that we are online that we have a big voice within the community right we definitely have the ability to make change within the games that we enjoy but keep in mind the online community as a whole for any game out there is a minority section of what the greater narrative of the greater player base of what's out there. The main thing is that a lot of people have really wanted a Japanese styled Assassin's Creed game, right? We haven't really had a mainline game of that. And then we finally get one and it doesn't live up to some of the, ex and it doesn't live up to the expectations of some of the people within the community. Though I would say that Assassin's Creed Shadows, at least on YouTube side of things for the only kind of metric we can really utilize as a front facing person like myself, the guy kind of judge what community feedback has been sentiment you can see right here that pretty much overwhelmingly in every possible channel out there it's been downvoted like here specifically for ign for the uh, official cinematic reveal right it came out two months ago 5k likes 21,000 dislikes you move over to the game spot right 4.3k likes 25,000 dislikes and then you come over to another review over here from GameSpot. 1.5K likes, 7.1K dislikes. Very heavy handed on the dislikes, especially on the Ubisoft channel, but the Ubisoft channel specifically gets a lot of hate. So I wouldn't say it's a true metric, right? Because I think a lot of people just kind of go on the Ubisoft YouTube channel just to hate. But you can see here 292,000 likes to 776,000 dislikes. Now I am using the plugin, so it's not 100% accurate representation of the numbers when it comes exactly of how many likes and dislikes. But the idea is to get the general ratio and you can get the idea there is a trend that most of the videos that anytime Assassin's Creed gets mentioned, it gets downvoted heavily. So I understand the Assassin's Creed Twitter account coming out with like a, a message to the community about this game, but then not making any concessions to people's feedback or concerns with the game. So it feels like you're just kind of feeding into more hatred. Me personally, I am really interested with this Assassin's Creed. I want to jump in and play this game. I really like that dual hero character dynamic with Nawa being much more of like a stealthy kind of character. 
and you have Yasuke being much more like a heavy-handed, you know, melee type of character. So I want to see how that dynamic plays out. I want to know Yasuke's story within the game. Like, how did someone like Yasuke become such a prominent figure within the story of the game, right? With the release date of November 12th coming right around the here guys towards the end of the year, I definitely will jump in and play it. If you guys want to see more about that game, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. If you guys learned something from this video or at least enjoyed it in some capacity, I hope I earned your like and subscribe. If you missed any content from me recently, check out these videos right here and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.